Just checking out the, the scene. Nobody behind us. Here we go. Holy shit! Holy shit! And of course, right after somebody pulls up. Oh, dude, that thing, hey. The tack, I don't think the phone got it very well, but the tack went like all the way up to 35 to 3600, and then dude, it sounded like all it hell was... broke loose. Oh, it... Like, I've never seen this truck actually fishtail from a stop like that. That was. It... That was a huge improvement with putting power down. Holy crap. All right, we're gonna try a four wheel drive launch on the street. I roll forward, make sure everything clicks in there. You know it's set. What is it? Yeah. <coughs> crap that was a 60 foot right there on the track that gave me the butterfly stuff. oh my god the roller coaster stuff oh <laughs> oh mg <laughs> you got a lap full of uh spark plugs every <laughs> one of these spark plugs just <laughs> fell off in my lap <laughs> Woo! Dude, that was on a piece of crap street with these street tires and it just dude it took off like it, it took off. It didn't spin. It just it didn't went. spin. Yeah, it, dude, it just literally. I felt like we just launched frostbite off the trans brake. Like that was insane. What's up Mopar fam? Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Today is the day we are putting the new Circle D triple disc converter in Project Storm. As you can see we got it on the lift and we've already started draining fluids out of it. So stay tuned. It's gonna be a long video but we're gonna get it done today. So we got Storm on the lift. As you can see we just kind of started. We got the pan off. Uh, we got the fluid obviously drained out. We're just kind of letting some stuff drip dry. We're going to replace this transmission filter. And then you have a screw-on filter that goes right here. And we have it already out. It's laying down there. So we're going to put new filters in real quick. Put the pan back on. Um, that way we're not getting dripped on with transmission fluid. And then we're going to have to obviously pull this transmission uh, down to be able to get the meat and potatoes in for the circle D. What are you trying to do? Pull the filter out. Oh, you gotta take a screw out. Is there a screw? Yeah, there's a screw torx right there. Holds it up. Oh, yeah. And then there's an O ring that sticks in somewhere yeah. with an O ring. And for the big flat filter right here, you have one screw right here towards the back side that holds this filter up. Uh, to take this screw out, you're going to need a Torx. It's a T25. And that's the only thing that holds that filter up besides uh, the little neck that has an O-ring on it that actually plugs up into the valve body. And that neck is up here. So just kind of be careful. Pull that down. And uh, pretty much reverse thing. You'll slide the new filter up there and put the screw back in. And then sometimes you want to make sure the o-ring came with it and it, it did not sitting right there so you can kind of see let me get over here you can see how the o-ring stayed with it and the transmission now the new filters usually will come with a new one so you want to make sure you get that out and then put the new one in did it come out no i get something to hook it with does it have a new one yeah a new one okay so here's the new one that's the new seal. And you always want to install that yeah. in the pan, not on the filter. Which is exactly. So once you get out, the, once you get the new one out, 
you're gonna push this new seal in the transmission first lube it up with some fluid that's dripping <laughs> and then install the new filter and of course boom there you go i'm an ams oil dealer if you need anything for the truck or your car let me know we can hook you up We did Project Storm last uh, last weekend. We did all the fluids on this truck. We did the front diff with AMS oil, and we did the rear diff also with AMS oil. So now the transmission is going to be getting done with the converter. So this whole truck will be AMS oil all the way down. So we got the new uh, canister filter installed. We got the flat pan filter installed we have already I just removed the front drive shaft uh, this is four-wheel drive truck and we got the rear drive shaft removed there they are right there and we have our pan doctored up right here with some good old good old Honda bond so we're about to put our pan back on and that way we can start trying to get this transmission down and out of the way so we can get a converter put in this thing so heck yeah here we go all right guys so we have we just removed these two bolts on the lower side of the transmission there's two bolts up here on the side that holds this bracket you got to get this bracket out so you can get to your converter bolts to get them loose. And then on this four-wheel drive model, we have a bracket right here that's mounted to the side of the transmission on the driver's side. And then there's three bolts. You can see him working on one over here that is bolted to the top of the front diff. And they're just basically like support bracket right here. So we're trying to get this bracket unbolted right now. That way we can get to our starter and get our starter unbolted and continue on so that's kind of where we're at right now we got our exhaust unhooked um, it's a little easier for us because we got custom exhaust um, so we don't have anything you know laying across or underneath the transmission it's all pretty open for us so um, we're thankful for that right now that's for sure All right, Mopar fam, so we see we just got this big bracket out the bottom. This is what that bracket looks like right here. You got two bolts up top on each side going straight up. And then you got two on the lower transmission side of the case. That lets you access the converter bolts. Let me get some light here. So right up here, you can see there's one light there we go so there's one converter bolt right there um, and then we'll have to spin rotate the uh, engine over to get to the other three um, once we get all the converter bolts out then we can continue on uh, removing bolts for a transmission case and try to slide everything back so that we can get the converter out so stay tuned we're getting there Mopar fam all right so we got one converter bolt out we got my son right here he's on the front of the crank with a big socket and a ratchet rotating the motor for ryan and then he is actually pulling these converter bolts out um so you just need basically a big long big long wrench right here works out and a hammer to get it loose you just kind of whack it like so and uh, once you get them loose, you can just work them the rest of the way by hand. So turn it back down. Are you inside the storm? Yeah. I'm about to attach myself to the crank. There you go. All right, so these converter bolts are right here 
So there's two. He's working on the third one. And then there, there'll be one more. There's four of them that holds the converter on. All right. And what size are those again? That is an 18. So 18. You crank need an 18 bolt. wrench. 22. Gear wrench works great. Um, for our crank bolt, 22. it's a 22. And that's what we're rotating the motor with. Yeah. And uh, pretty good system. Works out pretty well. Just got to get the young one up there. Work the guns. Turn that hemi. Turn that hemi. That's good. Turn it down. Yeah. There you go. We're getting it done. We almost got the circle D. About to be ready. Coffee time. All right, so we just let it down so we can unhook the battery real quick. Um, we're about to remove the starter. So obviously you got hot power going to that starter. So you wanna make sure you have the battery disconnected before you play with that starter. Um, so yeah, here we go. Time to get the starter out. All right, we're going to do a quick uh, tech tip here. So when you pull your drive shaft out of uh, pretty much any transmission, um, what works good to not get fluid constantly dripping on you, all right? And I've seen many people do it many different ways, but here you a good old rubbery glove and a handshake there, fella. Works pretty good. I've even seen people cram actual rubbers on there if you know what i mean but anything gets the job done there you go high five my man continue on all right so here's the starter we got it unbolted you got two 15 millimeter bolts you got one here and one right here we've already got them removed you got one signal wire that clips on to the starter solenoid right here and then you got one power cable that uh, has a nut that holds it on, and that is a 13. 13. Um, so that's pretty much it. So we're about to pull the starter out. All right, so right now we're kind of supporting up our transmission and uh, transfer case. We got one of these little prop rods. We're gonna undo our cross member so that we can lay our exhaust kind of down out of our way. Um, we don't really have enough room to pull it back um, because of all the bends. So, we're going to lay, once we pull this cross member, we can let our exhaust drop and get it out of our way. Um, and then we are going to get our little power table that we have over here. All right, Mopar fam, so getting a little closer. As you see, we got the transmission cross member out. Uh, you got two bolts on the passenger, two bolts on the driver, and then you got three nuts right here. We got them threaded back on so we don't lose them. That goes up into the cross member for the transmission mount. Um, and then that whole cross member will come down and out of your way. So now we are going to try to finagle our exhaust down through this hole and then get our power table over here and hold this transmission up so we can get some bolts out of it. All right, Mopar fam, as you can see, we have jumped ahead here a little bit. We got the transmission down. Uh, we got it on our little table here. Converter is out. You can see them on the floor. Transmission. So here is our stock converter. And this is our new Circle D Pro Series triple disc converter. <laughs> Something I never noticed, if you look inside the, it's gonna be hard to see here maybe. There we go. 
inside there you see the gear or the teeth they don't have teeth all the way around there's three spots that's missing you know I'd say I don't know th maybe two or three teeth the new converter from circle D has teeth all the way around it as you can see <clears throat> and the shafts on the transmission have teeth all the way around them um, so yeah just note to self way to go circle D for you know utilizing all the teeth on the stock transmission I don't know what's up with that you know um, from the factory why wouldn't they why would they not build something and use all of the teeth when they could that don't make no sense I guess they're cheaping out there I have no idea if somebody knows comment down below and tell me why but to me that just seems kind of stupid and cheap um, we're putting a little bit of fluid in the converter before we put it in um, the other thing I want to note the circle D converter is a little bit smaller in diameter but the bolt holes are the same everything will work um, the factory converter is a little larger and also it is much heavier as this thing is all like steel um, I believe these are all billet aluminum I want to say they make these out of but this converter being even a triple disc this thing is tremendously lighter than that factory converter I was shocked when I picked them up um, so that's gonna be a huge gain right there just getting getting rid of a lot of weight off the crankshaft per se um, you know I think the motor is definitely gonna probably pick up and <laughs> and spool up much quicker having less weight to have to rotate so that's gonna be a bonus also on top of everything else we're gonna gain doing this circle D converter so heck yeah let's uh stick this thing in the new uh, let's put the new circle d in the transmission and start putting this thing back together all right so i just picked up the new circle d we put it in the transmission when you put these in make sure you fill them pop all the way in um because it's kind of it's got to kind of fit over a couple different set of gears there other thing is you can kind of rotate it back and forth I don't know if you can hear that you can hear like a little click back and forth let you know that everything's engaged in the pump and everything and you're seated and good to go um, before you start putting bolts in this so there you go circle D time all right Mopar fam we are moving right along we got the transmission bolted back up as you can see we got everything plugged back in we got to put the cross member back in um, right now we are putting in the converter bolts um, you're gonna put one drop of Loctite on that converter bolt nope that's all you need per mr. John of the cope the John cope drop the John cope drop right that's the rule that's the transmission rule I guess one drop. One drop. Rotate. One drop. On All right, stay tuned. We're getting there. All right, Mopar fam. We are getting there. We are getting there. We got the cross member back up. We got the starter in. We're just kind of doing the little knickknacks. We still got to do the drive shaft for the front, drive shaft for the back. Uh, we got to tidy up our exhaust still, but we are almost getting there. Almost time to put fluid in. Do some test hits. Test hits. Test hits. Four drive launches. Test hits. All right. All right, Mopar fam, we got. Project Storm almost done. We got the exhaust all back on, drive shafts in. We already filled transfer case up with new Amsoil fluid. We got front shaft in, exhaust hook back up. Everything's plugged back in. So now it is time to let the truck down and 
Fill the transmission full of some new Amsoil fluid. Push the button up first. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. All right. Amsoil going in, baby. Down the hole. Down the hole. Project Storm about to be bad. Oh yeah, get you some. Oh, Storm is looking good, boys. That Circle D converter. Oh yeah. Listen to that low tune, baby. Oh yeah. Stock camshaft. My low tune I put in there. take storm out for the first drive with a new stall converter circle d triple disc pro series and this is the 34 to 3600 stall that we chose um so far the truck's acting perfect we got forward we got reverse so we must have done something right oh yeah we're backing up Go, let's go. <coughs> we got new spark plugs in here because it's time to do a freshen up on the plugs. They've been in here for over a year. We've been beating on it. So normally when you got a stall converter, the best way to say it feels when you're just putting around it kind of feels like you're towing something or the truck feels a little heavier um, or it feels a little mushy is the best way to put it so what do you think so far so far it doesn't feel much different than really it's feeling about the same right now to me right what right what like that right there it's not real it's not super snappy when you just take off when you got a stall converter. Just regularly driving. But when you put the hammer down, she will grab, boys. She will grab. Oh, you can, I can kind of feel it's like that wind up feeling you get. Yeah. And then, like, it just goes. <laughs> She's driving good, though. Well, I can tell you right now, this thing used to struggle to do a burnout. And now after we did the new exhaust and we got everything kind of tuned, she will burn rubber now. But she is definitely going to lay rubber when you smack it now with this converter. There is no doubt about that. There you go. I was checking out the, the scene. Nobody behind us. Here we go. Holy shit! Holy shit! And of course, right after somebody pulls up. Oh, dude, that thing, hey. The tack, I don't think the phone got it very well, but the tack went like all the way up to 35 to 3600 and then Dude, it sounded like all it hell was... broke loose. Oh, it... Like I've never seen this truck actually fishtail from a stop like that. That was it... that was a huge improvement with putting power down. Holy crap. <laughs> we all loop back around. <laughs> 
Uh-oh, 5-0 up there. 5-0. We see you, boy. We see you. We see you up there. try four-wheel drive launch on the street i roll forward make sure everything clicks in there you know it's set what is it yeah <coughs> it turns on for us holy shit dude that son of a bitch that dude holy crap that was a 60 foot right there on the track that gave me the butterfly stuff. oh my god the roller coaster stuff Oh, 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 MG. You got a lap full of uh, spark plugs. Every <laughs> one of these spark plugs just <laughs> fell off in my lap. Dude, Woo! that was on a piece of crap street with these street tires. And it just, dude, it took off. Like, it, it took off. It didn't spin. It just It didn't went. spin. Yeah, it, dude, it just literally... I felt like we just launched frostbite off the trans brake. Like, that was insane. Oh, I'm so ready to go to the track. Shaking. Dude, that was insane. Like, um, I haven't... Dude, I've read... We've been in... I've been in Storm a lot. Trying to tune. That's with log, three of us in here. Everything. Yeah, that was with and all three of us I'm here. telling you right now, Storm has never, never left like that. that ever. That, that's an extra, what, 400 or... 100 and 250 pounds at least at least yeah with all three of us so that's at dude the seven thousand pounds yeah your your normal right your there. normal 60 foots has been two ones 2.1 two point ones with the stock converter and these same tires and wheels and man that felt that felt that, that felt ridiculous if that that's, felt so much harder yeah than if we don't see, yeah, I would be shocked if we don't get a one seven sixty yeah. foot, at least, maybe. We'll see. It definitely does not feel like a slow ass beast now. No. Off the line. I didn't expect that. Like, because it, that it, was, it, it, it's like it took a minute to spool up. Yeah. Before. Now it's just like, ah. it is gone. Like it took off so hard, I didn't even get a chance to look at the tack, like, because it just threw me in the seat, and all the spark plugs went into my lap. Like I was shocked. I didn't. I didn't know. I. I, I didn't. Wow. Well, I, I was shocked. I can't believe it in turbo. <laughs> yeah, I expected it to actually maybe spin all four tires, but it, dude, it hooked. And it's cold out here today, and we and on a crap road. Like twenty. Well, with twenty inch stock Dodge wheels and tires. Holy crap! That was insane. <sighs> it's gonna be a whole new animal on the track, guys. Holy crap! <sighs> All right, I think we're at a good stopping point. We're gonna head back to the shop. We're gonna recheck the fluid, make sure everything's good after running it around a little bit. Uh, Circle D, you freaking rock. Um, the triple disc Pro Series for the uh, 545s and the six-speed Rams. Dude, this converter rocks. This converter rocks. We can't wait to get on the track and see the actual time slip difference, but it it rocks so stay tuned we got crap in the bed too that's a spare and a jack spare and a jack, <laughs> spare and a jack. so stay tuned guys don't forget hit that subscribe button give the video a thumbs up comment down below what you think of uh the circle d if you guys have one um what's your opinion on it comment down below what you think the new 60 foot time is going to be for storm I'm very curious. We'll see you guys on the next one.